Hello everyone, this is Reza. Welcome to another video of Intermediate Rigging Series. In this video, we're going to focus on prop controls and, to, and how to rig props. Now, before I get into today's session, let's just do a quick recap on what we did in the previous session. I've already gone ahead and finished the twist controls for the elbow, which goes from the wrist to the elbow, and the whole setup will get parented to the wrist bone. And then I mirrored everything to the other side and did the same thing. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, click on the pop-up banner or watch the video on twist control for the arms. Now, for today's session, I thought it would be a good idea to just show you a really interesting way and very effective way on how to build a rig for your props. One valid approach is to skin the prop to the bone. So when the bone rotates or translates, the prop follows. But another way, especially if you have a game character and you would like to export your game character to Unreal or Unity, would be to create a skeleton. So when you export the character, you export the skeleton to the real-time engine and benefit from it. So that would be the focus for this session. I've got actually quite a number of props for this character. I'm just going to focus on the couple and do the rest in between sessions. Well, needless to say, the approach would be exactly the same. So for now, I'm going to focus on this uh, military cold and this pocket for the arrows, especially because this has got a clip. So we need a slightly different approach, but some of them are fairly straightforward, like this bottle is very straightforward and same as the bat and the bag, which would be almost identical to how we set up a controls for the Colt. Once we get this done, that's more than enough for you guys to go ahead and rig your own prop using this method. Now let's dive right in to make sure you're in rigging menu set and I'm just gonna draw a skeleton at the center of the scene and I always think about uh, what bone would be the right bone to parent your newly created bone to of course this prop is located here one way is to parent this bone to pelvis another way is to parent it to the thigh chain. I think it would be a better idea since this cold is closer to the thigh chain is to have this bone as a parent. So select driver, select the driven, go to parent, no offset and add. Right off the bat I'm just going to get rid of this parent constraint. We don't need it anymore and I'm going to use my rotation and scale tool to position this really quick. All right, that's good. I'm just gonna freeze transform on the joint, enable local rotation access, and we already know how to fix the orientation for the end joint, orient to the world, and X is down the chain, all good. I'm just gonna toggle off local rotation access and bring everything back. Now, all I need to do is to create a control and parent constraint it to the bone and then we do a final cleanup. I'm going to bring the script for the controls, just create a cross control. I'm going to make this blue since it's on the right hand side of the character. Bring it to position really quick. Now let's uh, right click on it, go to control vertex and I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes shaping this. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this shape. I'm just going to follow the silhouette or contour of the prop.
Well, that will do. That's good. Okay, now freeze transform, of course. And let's uh, parent this bone, this end bone to the control. So I'm going to select the driver, shift select the driven, go to constraint parent, this time maintain offset on. Now when I move, you can see the bone moves with it. Let's go ahead and rename everything really quick. JNTR cold 01. I'm going to use the same name, JNTE R cold 01. You can use A or A and B, of course. Using the same naming convention, instead of JNT, I'm going to use CTRL R cold 01. And I am going to group it as usual and followed by GRP 01. Now think about channels you don't want to be visible. Of course, I don't want control um, translate X to be visible because I don't want to detach the prop. That never happens. And of course, I don't want scale. So lock and hide. Now comes to clean up. JNTR cold will be parented to the thigh chain. Press the P key. And this guy will be parented to the pelvis control. Pelvis control is part of center of gravity and center of gravity is parented to the global. So everything should be resized proportionally. Let's put that to a test. That's great. And if I rotate pelvis, then the control should follow. If I select center of gravity and rotate, everything else follows. That's exactly what we want. Now let's do the same thing. Well, almost the same thing for the pockets for the arrow. So I'm going to select a bone. This time I'm going to draw two bones, three joints. And I'm just going to explain why in a second. The reason I'm drawing more bones is because if I zoom in, you can see I have a little clip in here. And I want to have that secondary action when the character runs. So the reason I'm mentioning this is because I want you to think about those scenarios every time you build up a rig for your prop. Now, the next question is, where should I parent this chain to? Should I parent this to the middle handle? Well, think about it. If I parent this to the middle handle, if the character runs and twists, this will stay behind simply because the middle bone doesn't orient. It does move, but it doesn't orient. So that wouldn't be the right bone for it, at least not for this setup. The best bone for that would be the pelvis handle. So I'm just going to select the pelvis handle, then select joint three and do a simple parent constraint with no offset. Right off the bat, I'm going to delete the parent constraint. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to use my rotate and scale tool to bring this into position. Next is to fix the orientation if there is any problem with it. Well, the first and the second bone look okay, but the third bone needs fixing. So I'm just going to go orient to the world and that will fix the problem. I'm going to select all three and turn off the local rotation axis. And for these three, as a matter of fact, for these two, I may use the script that we had and we used in previous sessions. Uh, to build up the controls just to try a different way of doing this of course I can use the way the method that I used for uh, the cult but just to add a bit of variety I'm just going to select everything and with these two bones selected I'm going to right click and execute that is going to create two curves for us and the naming is not the greatest so we need to change those and of course, we need to change the naming for these guys as well. But we're going to do that through the cleanup for now. I'm just going to select the curves, select the joints, isolate. And then I'm just going to spend a few minutes tweaking the shape.
No, that should do it. I'm just going to um, color them. So I'm going to use the script, go in here and make them a blue again, because they're on the right hand side of the character. And of course, I'm going to name it, rename everything. All right, we fixed the naming as well. Now it's time to see where we can parent them. Now JNT arrow will be parented to the pelvis handle. Press the P key. And the controls for the arrow will be parented to the pelvis for the same reason. Now, if I hide the character, you can see if I rotate the pelvis, everything else follows. If I resize the global control, everything resizes proportionally. That is great. You may experience simply a clutter uh, or, or too many NURBS curves lying around and that can be a headache sometimes, especially for animators. It might be a little bit difficult to animate all of these controls. So I have a tendency to come up with a way to make things nice and easy for animators. I'm going to create a custom attribute called this prop viz. And with that prop viz selected, I'm going to select these two. And I'm going to select the cold going to go to the node editor, bring them in. Of course, we don't want these control curves to be visible. All we want is these three. So I need to bring center of gravity as well. We do have the prop with control center of gravity, and that's what we need. So that's really easy. We are going to say prop this visibility, go to the visibility of all of these control curves. Now look, if the visibility of the prop this is off, we don't see any of them. As soon as I make them on, they appear. So it's really good if you don't need them, you can just hide them and we'll clean up the scene. But if you do need them, you can just turn it on and that gets the job done. And since it's Boolean, you can't overshoot the value. It's either on or off. That's great. Now, one last tweak that I left this control. You can always drop it in and just parent it that way. Now it's time to do cleanup for these two controls. Again, just like what we did for the cold, we, where we turned off translate X and scale. I'm going to do the same thing for these two, for the arrow pockets, translate X and scale, lock and hide. Now everything should work. Again, if I select and test. And that's one way of creating a rig for your props. Now look, if I go in here, well, it's, the prop is not skinned yet, but I can always go and add some secondary action to the prop while I have individual control over the orientation of the prop itself, which again creates a really nice secondary animation or secondary action. So this gives the animators a freedom to animate the prop either in Maya or in real time engines. And you can easily export the skeleton and make use of this setup. Of course, for something like military goggle, I can always use skinning tool 
to skin that to the head bone and there's nothing wrong with that and in the future lessons we are going to create a brand new skeleton for skinning purposes and we may talk about this even more now that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you very much for tuning in and see you in the next video